Hello students, after the class of measures of central tendency, this is the class on diagrammatic representation of statistical data, especially histogram, ogive and polygon. That is we are talking about frequency data involving frequency distribution. So this has a very importance in statistical analysis because we can calculate the mode from the histogram. We can calculate the median and quartiles and percentiles, deciles, that is the partition values from OJIF. So we'll discuss in this video how to draw the this graphical representations and what are their importance in statistical analysis. So actually diagrammatic presentation of frequency distribution classified into three types. Number one, histogram. Number two, frequency polygon and cumulative frequency polygon or OJIF. Cumulative frequency polygon is known as OJIF. So first we'll discuss about histogram. It consists of a set of adjoining vertical rectangles whose width represents the class intervals, widths and height represents the corresponding frequencies for equal width. And if the width is not equal, that is unequal width, it is represents the frequency densities, corresponding frequency densities. So, and also boundaries are plotted along the horizontal axis, that is the class boundaries, and the frequencies are plotted against the vertical axis. So, we have a data, look at the data, weights are given by 90 to 100, 100 to 110 and so on, and the corresponding frequency is given by 500, 700, 300, 400 and 100. So, look at that the boundaries look at the boundaries are 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140. So the boundaries are along the horizontal axis. Look at that. These are the class boundaries and the frequencies along the vertical axis. This is the frequency. So this is your frequency and this is your class boundaries. Okay, clear. Now we have to draw the rectangles of equal width proportional to the frequency of the corresponding class. So first case, it is 90 to 100, the rectangle will be 90 to 100, that is 10 with 10 and frequency corresponding to 500, the height is corresponding to 500. So let us draw the rectangle like this, okay, clear, first rectangle, look at the second rectangle of width, same width because this is a class of equal width and the 700, so let us draw the next rectangle, this is proportional to 700 okay this is equal with maybe some error in drawing 300 next one is 300 of equal width so let us have yeah 300 and next one is 400 with adjoining rectangles we are drawing adjoining rectangles and the last one is 100 130 to 40 this is 100 so this is how this is the adjoining rectangles we are drawing so the area of each rectangle is proportional to the frequency of the corresponding class now in this case how will you calculate the mode of this distribution mode is suppose you want to calculate the mode then just draw the diagonal with the adjoining rectangles this diagonal the intersection of these two diagonals gives the mode the highest rectangle you have to choose and draw from these vertices to these vertices that diagonals of the adjoining rectangles then the intersection of two diagonals gives you the mode this gives you the mode of the distribution by in the with the help of histogram now let us see another example where the width is not equal so frequency distribution 14 to 15 with this 1 16 to 17 1 but 18 to 20 with this 2 21 to 24 with this 3 so you have a data unequal width so in this case you have to calculate the class boundaries you know d equal to 0 0.5 0 0.5 has to be subtracted on the lower limit and 0 0.5 has to be added on the upper limit so this is how you will calculate the class boundaries class width is calculated 2 2 3 3 etc and the frequency is given by corresponding frequencies are given by this 
so frequency density is simply frequency by class width so 60 by 230 140 by 270 150 by 350 and so on so this is how you are calculating frequency densities now your horizontal axis will be class boundaries clear so 13.5 15.5 17.5 20.5 etc look at that your class boundaries are on the along the horizontal axis but your vertical axis is frequency density is along the vertical axis your frequency density this is along the vertical mm, uh, axis so now you will calculate suppose 13.5 uh, to 15.5 you have the frequency density 30 so look at that this is your 30 so your width is in this case 2 and in this case in the second case 15.5 to 17.5 and the frequency is 7 frequency density is 7 look at that frequency density is 7 t 70 so in this case your width is also 2 it's the same width as the previous but 75.17.5 to 20.5 your width is 3 it is of different width and the corresponding frequency density is 50 also in the next case 20 to 24.5 your width is 4 but you have a frequency density in this case 27.5 so this is 27.5 so on so this is how if your width is not equal or for unequal width you have to use frequency density in the histogram so this is how you will draw histogram for equal width and for unequal width let's come to the next graphical representation frequency polygon this is another way of representing the frequency distribution diagrammatically it is used generally when the classes are of equal width very carefully you note this point only when the width is equal then in that case you have you can draw the frequency polygon in this method the frequency of each class is plotted against the mid value of the corresponding class so you have to calculate the mid value of the corresponding class okay so let us have an example 0 to 10 10 to 20 etc and frequencies are given by this so mid value 0 to 10 5 15 25 35 equal width look at that you have a equal width width is equal in each case so you have a mid values now you plot the diagram plot the diagram mid values suppose this is your mid values mid values are along the horizontal axis and frequencies are along the vertical axis this is your mid values and this is your frequency so at 5 look at that the frequency is 7 so you point is 7 at 15 look at that the point is uh, frequency is 10 so at 15 the frequency is 10 this is 10 at 25 frequency is 23 so this is 23 so on so this completes the diagram look at that at 3 at 55 the frequency is 3 so 55 the frequency is 3 this is the frequency vertically and horizontally mid values now you join this with straight lines okay you join the points with straight lines okay next down and down and join the terminal points just arbitrarily so this becomes your frequency polygon this is your frequency polygon frequency curve also known as frequency curve now frequency polygon can be uh, clear in mid value is required along horizontal direction and frequency along vertical direction but one important point is that it is for equal width and also uh, frequency polygon can be obtained from the histogram go to the histogram frequency polygon can be obtained from the histogram by joining the successive midpoints of the top of rectangles which constitute the histogram and polygon is completed in the same manner so you just take the midpoint of the rectangles midpoint of the rectangles top top of the rectangles top of the rectangle top of the rectangle and top of the rectangle and top of the rectangle and joining these points similarly by joining these points you can have the frequency polygon so this is how you can draw the frequency polygon okay so this frequency polygon can be joined by joining the uh, midpoint successive midpoints of the top of rectangles which constitute the histogram so this is how we are talking about frequency polygon now the most important thing frequency polygon gone okay now the last part of our discussion is cumulative frequency polygon or ojive so cumulative frequency polygon 
against the class boundaries it is drawn against the class boundaries okay so it is of two types less than type or more than type so you have a data uh, class boundaries along the horizontal axis and frequencies cumulative frequencies along the vertical axis okay so you, suppose weekly wages are given by this table and the number of workers so let us draw this is the class boundary look at that the class boundary is 0 20 40 60 80 and 100 okay and cumulative frequency less than type is 0 0 40 you have a 40 40 plus 51 91 91 plus 64 155 155 plus 38 193 and 193 plus 7 200 so this is cumulative frequency of less than type and so it means that a number of number of workers below the wages zero zero number of workers below the wages 20 is 40 number of workers below the wages 40 rupees 40 how many workers are below wages 40 91 how many work workers are below wages 60 rupees 60 155 so this is the meaning of the cumulative frequency and similarly we can explain the cumulative frequency of more than type how many workers are above zero 200 how many workers are above wages 20 rupees 20 160 and so on so this is more than type data okay and this is less than type data clear so this is how the table is now look at that come to the diagram class boundaries are along the horizontal axis and cumulative frequencies are along the vertical axis so class boundaries uh, you plot the class boundaries 0 20 40 60 80 100 so 0 so in uh, 20 when the class boundary is 20 when the class boundary is 0 0 cumulative less than type is 0 so 0 and 20 when the class boundary is 20 cumulative frequency is 40 less than type is 40 look at that 20 it is 40 40 and when it is 40 when the class boundary is 40 it is 91 look at that 40 it is 91 these blue lines are the less than type and the sky blues are the uh, more than type sky blues are the more than type so you have a data of blue uh, uh, blue dots on the diagram as the less than type so this is how for the last one is 100 200 so look at that this is 100 and this value is 200 so you join the diagram with a curve this red curve is the less than type okay and let's have a more than type data okay so this is how your this is red line is your red curve is the more than the less than type and green curve is the more than type so this less this one is less than type ojaif and this is more than type okay clear so this is how you can draw the ojaif or cumulative frequency polygon now if you want to find out the median what is the median median is the intersection of two ojives that is this is your median value the intersection if you draw in the graph it will be very perfect and you can easily find out the median or q2 second quartile okay now suppose you want to calculate q3 q1 q1 is your 3 uh, q1 is your n by 4 sorry q1 is your n by 4 so how will you draw q1 q1 is your n by 4 your n is 200 look at that your n is 200 this is your n so n by 4 is 25 so this is your 25 suppose this is your n by 4 so n by 4 you draw the line till it intersect the curve you draw the line with a blue line till it intersect the curve so it intersect the curve here so this is your n by 4 this is your q1 similarly q3 q3 is 3 n by 4 your q3 that is the third quartile q3 is 3n by 4 so 3n by 4 uh, n by 4 is 25 and 3n by 4 is 75 so this is suppose 3n by 4 in the graph you will easily find out this is your 3n by 4 so you draw the horizontal line it will intersect the red line and draw the vertical line this is your q3 so this is how you can draw 
from the graph you can find out from the graph q1 q2 q3 also the other procedure partition values that is decile percentage whatever so cumulative frequency polygon or the ogive is very important for us for drawing and for calculation purpose of partition values median etc so this video in this video we talked about histogram frequency polygon and cumulative frequency polygon or ogive and how to cal calculate median and partition values and also mode from the histogram so i hope this video is very helpful to you so uh, subscribe my channel and i will upload more videos on mathematics and statistics thank you